Good morning. It's good to be with you again today on this uh, chilly uh, Thursday morning. I don't, I don't know about you, but I'm 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 tired of winter. I was I was enjoying a couple of days of warm weather, and I got excited, and now we're back cold again. So you know, but uh, you know, it's all good. We'll, we'll be warm, um, you know, soon enough, I guess. So if not, we'll drink a lot of coffee and stay warm. But uh, today's um, today as we as we read scripture together, um, the passage that really stood out to me the most was. Uh, Today's readings were all really well, really good. I really enjoyed Galatians as I always do. And um, the passage that really stuck out to me was our gospel lesson, uh, which is uh, Mark. Uh, we've been reading in Mark in our gospel lessons, and Mark is interesting because Mark is the shortest of all the gospels. It's the shortest in length, and it's also in many ways the most direct. That when people ask me what book of the Bible should they read first, I often say Mark, because Mark um, really gets the point. Jesus is always moving, always active, always doing something. Um, John gives you all the deep metaphysical stuff. Matthew goes so much to the Old Testament. Luke is just so smart. But Mark really is the most action-packed is not the right word, but the most the most direct of all the Gospels. So um, today's gospel reading was from mark chapter six it's the feeding feeding the five thousand in verses 30 through 46 i'm sorry 30 through 44 um where it says this there's a verse early on that really spoke to me i really spoke to me i don't know if i speak to you but it spoke to me um verses 30 and and it's important one of the one of the keys for understanding mark's gospel Mark, probably more so than any other gospel. Uh, I don't know. This is important in all of Scripture. It's, this is important in all of Scripture, but it's really important in Mark. Mark's so fast-moving. To really understand what's happening in the passage you're reading, you really need to understand what's happening all around it. For Mark, context is so key. Mark, context is the key to understanding this. So, a little background. Yesterday we read about the beheading of John the Baptist. Um, John the Baptist was captured by Herod, um, his wife's daughter basically, uh, tricked him into beheading John. So, and to understand that, you have to understand there were very few people in scripture who really truly got and understand, understood Jesus. The disciples struggled too, very few other people did, but John the Baptist, from when they were in the womb, and scripture says that John the Baptist left in his mother's womb in the presence of Jesus. We see that John and Jesus had a very special connection. So John would have been about the, about the closest thing Jesus would have had to a best friend. So right before this, right before the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus' best friend was killed, martyred, murdered by the king. So that's what has just happened. Now let's read into verse 30. The past, the, the, uh, Apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And remember, this is important because um, he had, um, he, he in the passage, passage before that, remember, context is important. In chapter 6, verses um, 6 through 12, he sent, in chapter 6, 13, he sent them out to do mission and ministry. He sent them out, the 12. Then 30 picks up, they told him what had happened. So, you had the disciples having had a great victory. Great victory. They had done amazing things. Jesus suffering from the murder of his friend. All this had happened. So then he says in verse 31 to come away to a deserted place by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going and they had not even leisure to eat. I think that right there, that passage there is... A key verse because then we keep reading and many saw where they were going they followed them verse 34 says Jesus had compassion for them um, he began to teach them uh, they said hey it's getting late um, he said well, we can send them off to the towns by some days he said well you you, you feed them they're like well what are we gonna do with it where are we gonna go buy all McDonald's is closed man what are we gonna do so he said how many loaves do you have they gathered five loaves two fish he fed them there was 12 baskets of food left, you know, and I remember Bible always full of symbolism. 
12 is for completeness. The passage says here they ate and they were filled. This says there were 12 baskets left over. Uh, 12 tribes of Israel, you know, it's a, a powerful symbol of completeness that they had been completely taken care of. And all this, all this is really important. Uh, for the beginning of the 5,000, uh, Jesus broke the bread, blessed it. That's always symbolic. Anytime in scripture you see Jesus or anyone else break bread and, and bless it, um, that's symbolic for communion. That's always symbolic for communion. Um, but for me, the very beginning of the passage, verse 31, in light of what had just happened with John the Baptist, and in light of the victory the disciples had achieved, Jesus' command was, come away to the deserted place by yourselves and rest for a while. That's one of those passages I need to read because I don't do real well at resting. Um, that's why I took a little trip a couple weeks ago just to get away and unplug and, 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 and rest for a while mentally, spiritually. Um, we are in an age that prizes busyness. Um, you want to know how important you are? You look at your schedule. Um, we like to be busy. It's a good thing. It makes us feel makes us feel important. At least it does me. It makes me feel important to be so busy. Um, and what we substitute busyness for, you know, we're all saying uh, work harder or work, work smarter, not harder. Um, we are always busy. We're always doing something. But are we always doing the right thing? Are we really working on what matters? Are we spending our wills on things that don't matter? And what happens, it becomes like one of those self-propelling machines. We work harder, we're busier, so we don't have time to think. So we go, 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 we never rest. And we never give ourselves space for God to speak. And that's one of the things that we need to always understand is that no matter how busy we are in our life, no matter what's going on in our life, no matter how important it may feel, and trust me, y'all, I'm preaching to me, not to you. This is an Andy thing. I don't do this well. If we aren't giving ourselves space in our life for God to speak to us, then we'll never truly achieve our goals, our purposes, or even the fulfillment of what our life is about. Jesus, un Jesus understood they had just they'd had some great ministry, y'all. They'd, they'd seen all kind of powerful things happen. They'd seen the devil run. They healed. They've done amazing deeds of power. Great things had happened through them. Jesus now un had lost someone he loved, John the Baptist. There were a lot of emotions, a lot of joys, and a lot of pain coming through here. And Jesus said, okay, we need, we need a moment to breathe. We need, um, shall we say, a Sabbath, if you will. We need a moment to focus and breathe. And if we're not giving ourselves moments to breathe in our life, moments to breathe, then we can't do what happens next because what happens after they breathe for a second? They feed, they feed the 5,000. God's goal for us is not idle rest. God's goal for us is faithfulness. So, our resting replenishes us, renews us, and gives us grace to be faithful, to be obedient to the mission that God's calling us. Because here's what else happens. When we don't give ourselves time to rest, when we don't give ourselves time to hear God, we don't give ourselves time to, to, to quiet ourselves, we don't give ourselves the space to actually hear what God's calling us to do. I think sometimes I've been so busy with stuff that may or may not have been important that I did not have ears to hear and a soul to receive and a body rested enough to be faithful to the thing that God was truly calling us to do, calling me to do. So they go away and they rest. And after they rest, they then feed the 5,000. So today, give yourself space to rest, whatever that means. I, I think for a lot of us it means turning off our phones for a season for a second, maybe for a season, maybe for many days. Resting mentally, getting off Facebook, social media, YouTube, whatever. Turn the TV off. These things that are distractions are not restful. 
their distractions from my actual exhaustion. So turn off your distractions today. Give yourself quietness and space and rest and rest. And I can promise you that after you rest, you will have a replenished soul. You will have the ability to hear God's voice and you will have the ability to know what it is that he's calling you to next. So today, let's all find some space to rest in our lives. Praying for you today. Have a great day. I hope, uh, I hope you have an awesome Thursday today. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning on Friday morning for our, uh, our last Bible study of the week. Um, hope you have an awesome day. See you tomorrow.